All right, good people. Steve Baskus here with a demonstration of Arturia's Key Lab 61 Mark II. And this is just a quick, quick, well, it's quick as it's going to be, overview of the keyboard. So let's get right to it. We want to make it accessible. We want the text to speech engine to work, you know, to, to, to tell us what we're pressing and what we're, we're doing physically on the actual MIDI controller. So it's a, it's a beautiful keyboard. Uh, it's aluminum chassis. It feels nice. The keys feel nice. Um, sorry, I touched, um, I touched the keyboard, but, um, and there's the keys. There's, there's the piano. So this is like the German grand intimate. Something like that, right? Anyway, I'm not a keyboard player, really. But I'm going to show you this keyboard. So what we got here in front of us, what we want to do is I'm demonstrating this uh, using Pro Tools. Now, um, you'll be able to use this, I'm pretty sure, in any, any, any of the other digital audio workstations and um, makes, make use of the accessibility features. Um, Arturia put, you know, put together a little team uh, to do a lot of work for Analog Lab and, um, and, this, and this hardware piece, the Key Lab 61 or key, any of these. I believe the Key Lab 49, 61, and 88 are identical and should work, but we'll verify that moving forward. <clears throat> let's, let's make this keyboard speak. So what we need to do first in Pro Tools, what we're going to do is We've created an instrument track. I, I've actually made a bunch of music um, uh, and for this just just today, real quick. Uh, so we got some drums, uh, bass, guitar, uh, piano, um, and uh, two two other guitars. Um, and so those are mostly native instruments, uh, 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 sounds, and, and, and virtual instruments. Um, Arturia is on this. Uh, I think track three, two, three piano, and track. Uh, this and it's a piano. It's this German Grand Intimate, unless I knock it out off that preset. But so here we go. Um, what we want to do is, if you create a track, instrument track, and insert Arturia Analog Lab V on Insert A, uh, we'll arm this track that we have created. Three piano in track armed. And I'm going to open up the plugin window by uh, double tapping one a Flow Tools command. Plugin. Analog Lab V window. So we have the plugin window open uh, to Analog Lab V. We have the track armed. It's an instrument track. And again, um, you need to follow this exactly. Uh, for the, and this is a demonstration for Pro Tools. We'll get something out there for Reaper and, and Logic here soon. Um, so that's we got that in place. On the physical keyboard, if you touch the middle in the center, you'll feel a glass screen. That's that's the screen, and on that glo that glossy glass screen, there's a number of buttons and and the encoder knob. If you put your hand on the encoder knob to orient yourself, almost if you draw an X through it, there's buttons uh, at the ends of the lines of the X's. If you can visualize that, but Basically, uh, above and below, to the left and right, there are these buttons that are small. So at, if you touch the encoder knob, at the 11 o'clock position, there's a button, and at the 1 o'clock position, there's a button. And then, same thing, below it, at the 8 o'clock and 4 o'clock position are buttons. So let's talk about the top two buttons at the 11 and 1 o'clock position. The 11 o'clock position is the Categories button. And the one o'clock position is the um, preset um, button. Below that, at eight o'clock, or the left side, is the uh, left arrow, or previous, I guess, button. And on the right side, at four o'clock position, this is all from the encoder again, uh, these angles. Um, this, this four o'clock position in the lower right quadrant is the next or or um, right arrow and we'll use these to navigate and then below all of that below the encoder knob and the four small buttons that surround the encoder knob in the different corners 11 o'clock one o'clock eight o'clock four o'clock position below that is are these three buttons button one two three from left to right they're in a row they're tight 
they're a little bit larger. They're medium-sized buttons, uh, if I were to use some, some, some words to describe them. But what we want to do is hit button one. It's the far left button in this, this, these medium-sized buttons. So that's analog lab. And the other bu two buttons, button two to the right of that is DAW, or digital audio workstation. And button three, the last button, far right, is the user button in this row centrally located beneath the encoder knob. So again, analog lab, DAW, and user. And so the buttons that we're gonna talk about are analog lab, category, and preset, and the encoder knob. And the sequence is, to make this puppy talk, remember we have an instrument track with insert A is analog lab V and it's armed, so that needs to happen. What we're going to do is we're going to press the analog lab button, button one, in this row of three buttons. We're going to then go above the encoder knob, the, the button at 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock, category and preset. We're going to hold the category button down. And while holding it down, we're going to press the reset button, or preset, P-R-E-S-E-T, preset. We're going to press that button and release them all. So I'm holding down the category button pressing preset and letting up on both. Now we'll go to the encoder knob and depress it, push it down. And if I spin this clockwise to the right, it should say on. AL settings speech on. We have speech, but we still need to select it. So when it says on, now you should depress it. And now we will be in this mode uh, that allows us to hear um, our presets. So if I press analog lab, I'm just clicking it once and spin Browsing this. presets, jazz, beauty, harp, fusion lead, Venus rising. I have all these things I can go through and, and, and preview. So um, before we get to that, let's go over a few more things. Um, if you were to touch the left side of the keyboard and start feeling around, you're going to notice a chords and trans button. You're going to notice um, right above the pitch wheel and modulation wheel is the octave negative and plus button it's pretty common if you if you've used a midi controller um, to the right of that i'm not going to go over every button but most of these um, you have 16 pads these are pads i can play them like drums yeah so it's pretty cool these are like little pad like you know drum pads and then, you know, you got your keys. Um, and uh, on the far right side, we have uh, nine knobs across the top master, right corner. Master, 2.36 dB. I just touched the master. I could change that, adjust it. These um, faders and knobs are not touch sensitive in the sense of like capacitive touch or, or, or a touch screen uh, in that regard. It's there. I, when I move them, we get the value red. So uh, that's different from the Native Instruments Complete Control keyboard, but it's still amazing. Um, below these nine faders uh, are nine buttons. So nine knobs, nine faders, nine buttons. I'm pretty sure I got that right. And these do different things in different modes, and I'll demonstrate. So um, the nine buttons, I can filter, you know, different uh, instruments and stuff. So let's let's uh, play around with loading something else. I'll uh, load Fusion Lead. Fusion Lead. Loaded Fusion Lead. So you hear how it speaks. I just was spinning the knob left and right, you know, or clockwise, counterclockwise, and picked something, and now I've got a Fusion Lead. Anyway, interesting. Um, if I use the nine buttons in the right corner, they're like filters. Like I could pick um, the second button. Let's let's see. Well, let's pick this one, two, three, four. Select button. base. So this says select base. So let's go down to a lower octave and let's see what this sounds like. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about how we can use our DAW, um, control our DAW. So 
This part is not accessible. What, I, what we have to do is we have to hold the DAW button down. That's button two. That's, that's the button in the center of, of this, this row of three buttons um, underneath the encoder knob. So what I did was I used um, a, a video conference with Ira because I didn't have a sighted person available. And I held down the DAW button for a couple seconds, just two seconds. One one thousand, two one thousand. I let up, and by whole, you know, because this part it, the the screen's not going to read to us, unfortunately. Um, but I had Ira, the agent, or or someone you know you video conference with or a sighted person, turn the encoder knob and pick the DAW you want. So I picked Pro Tools, and I depressed the encoder knob, and it selected Pro Tools. It mapped everything to. To, to for Pro Tools, uh, so that I can use my DAW to do things like uh, the, the transport or uh, record tra arm record tracks, so on. Uh, mix, you know, I can use the faders to mix my audio and change my levels. I can, uh, you know, all kinds of things. It's great stuff. Even adjust the tracks like selection. So these nine buttons, I can move track one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I'm sure I can bank. I haven't figured that out yet. Oh, another cool thing is I can um, watch this. I can turn the sustain pedal on and off with just two clicks. So I hold this part one button. This part one button is a vertical uh, column of buttons. They're circular, very P1 small. one brightness, 0.630. And, um, just to the right of the screen. And they're spaced out quite a bit. And if you feel vertically in a column, you'll feel them and they're spread out. So this top one of the three circular buttons is part one. If I hold that down and then depress the sustain pedal, it will shut my sustain pedal off. So here we go. Watch how easy this Select is. Select part one. Sustain part one off. That's how easy. It's off now. I have no sustain. Now, if I want to turn it back on, I press this part one button again and hold it and then depress the sustain pedal while holding part one. Button. Select part one. Sustain part one on. Now we have sustain. Let's check it. Yeah, it's cool. Awesome, right? Very quick. Very different than uh, native instruments, unfortunately. I love native instruments. I have two of their controllers, but we're talking about Arturia right now. So let's see. I'm going to go, I'm going to press DAW quickly now because we, we, we held it for a few seconds, right, to go in the menu and pick Pro Tools, but I'm just going to press it quickly. And now I'm in DAW mode. I guess before I go on, I should show you in peripherals what you need to do to make your MIDI controller work in Pro Tools. So if I press um, caps lock or VO menu bar Apple, and I go over to the setup menu. Profile edit via track clip event audio option setup, and we go down into this setup menu and find peripherals. Setup hardware playback disk allocate peripherals ellipsis. We're gonna click here. Peripherals peripherals window synchro. And so in this window we want to click on the MIDI tab. So I'm gonna VO right arrow till I find machine MIDI. control MIDI controllers three of eight tab. I'll VO space. Selected. Then I'm just going to VO right arrow. Um, I'll VO home. Synchronization one of eight. And I'll VO down arrow. Synchronization one of eight tab. Oh, actually, it's not there. So I'll just VO right arrow through all of this and get to the first pop. Machine menu. committee. Eight, Dolby type. Receive from. Send to. Number CH. Number one. HUI. Pop up button. So this number one needs to be set to HUI. There's three pop-up menus here. So this first one should be HUI, Human User Interface. Keylab MKII 61, DAW, pop-up button. And these next these next two pop-up menus need to be the Keylab 61 mark. Keylab MKII 61, DAW, pop-up button. So both these are selected, DA, the Keylab 61 mark to DAW. And then all you have to do after you do those three options in this peripherals is go VO. OK, and button. And hit OK. Plug in. Now, now your MIDI controller is ready to be used. So I'm already in DAW mode. Um, if I go over here to one of these buttons, and I'm not going to go over all these buttons, 
in the Dropbox that I've created for Arturia. And if you want to be on that Dropbox, just send me an email message in the WhatsApp group or send me a direct email and we'll, we'll, we'll make it happen. But and that documentation will, will be the layout, the hardware layout. So if I press play, and then I press stop, uh, I can fast forward and rewind. I can loop, uh, you know, put, put it in loop playback. I can do undo. Um, I don't have all these memorized. Um, if I, in the, the, the filter uh, buttons that are these one through nine buttons under the faders, if I hit this first button, it should be track one. Um, and then there's solo a solo button here on the key lab 61. Again, it'll be in the documentation. If I press um, play and then solo it, Actually, let's move to a part of the song where it makes sense. So I'm gonna press asterisk three, two, period, enter, and press play, and let's listen real quick. So this is kind of what I created just for fun today, uh, fooling around. Um, so yeah, so I've tracked one. So if I press play, and, and again, I'm working all on the, um, MIDI controller, you know, so I'll hit play and then solo this. So that was um, drums, you know, I can go to track two. Let's see, I think it's the bass guitar. So if I uh, press play and solo. Um, and so on, you know, you get the point. Um, what else? What else to show you guys? Um, you know, I mean, it's got pitch and modulation and all that. I think I mentioned that maybe. Um, there's a lot of buttons. There's a lot more buttons on this than the uh, Native Instruments Complete Control Keyboard. Um, so many cool things. I'm gonna be able to show you more in the future uh, as I learn it. Anyway, the cool thing too to, to, to make note of is in, in Native Instruments, you have to change the instance, you know, in order to uh, you know, edit and work on that particular um, plugin and instrument track. Here, if you open up the plugin, you are automatically transferred. As long as you have that that track armed as well, uh, if your that track is armed and you've opened the plugin window for that track, you're you're good to go. So it's pretty it's pretty cool. Um, I will demonstrate more of that in another video, but this, this is, this is it. So thanks so much for listening. If you have any questions, write me, uh, Steve at baskis 360com That's S T E V E at B is in Bravo, A S K I S 360.com. And, uh, join the WhatsApp group for Arturia access. If you get the chance, I just started that today and, uh, hope this is helpful. Um, this is just one of many videos and audio files. I will create. Take care, everybody.